What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about the foundation of what Jurassic Park is and how this brand was both made as well as how it grew to be so big today. Over the last few years, I've done several videos on scenes from the books that science fiction writer Michael Crichton wrote but got omitted from the films. But now that the final film in the Jurassic World trilogy has been out for a while, I wanted to go over the entire franchise and its relation to these novels. So if you're a fan of the movies or someone just interested in learning more, here's why I think more more people should read the Jurassic Park books and why they're actually still massively important for the brand. So, if you guys didn't know already, there's six movies in this series, a lot of seasons of an animated series, and on top of that, a short film. But the books, there's literally just two. Jurassic Park and The Lost World. So you would think that, well, the movies probably should have stopped after the second film because they had no more material to adapt. But uh, when you read the books, you find out... Is not necessarily true at all and the big differences in the Jurassic Park movies versus their book counterparts is the fact that the first film the one that everybody knows and loves is kind of a diet version of the Jurassic Park novel they cut out huge bulky scenes of Dr. Henry Wu and John Hammond talking, as well as a lot of character stuff for Dr. Jerry Harding. Additional characters like Ed Regis are deleted entirely from the film and mixed with Donald Gennaro, the lawyer in the movie. And that, that even goes to dinosaurs. There's way less dinosaurs in the movie than there are in the book. There's way less dinosaur attack scenes. Robert Muldoon actually going after the T-Rex is a really big, important part of the book, and uh, as well as figuring out how the dinosaurs have been getting off of the island, which was an issue at the very beginning beginning of the novel. So yeah, you can already tell that the Jurassic Park book and movie, the first one alone, there's still a lot of material that got left on the cutting room floor even for writing the film and it would eventually get adapted here and there in the sequels but when you talk about the lost world book man it's completely different from the film we're in a completely different situation right now literally only ian malcolm sarah harding eddie carr and kelly are in the movie that are also in the book, I, I guess you could say there's more, but dude, realistically, they're completely different things. I mean, the Eddie Carr in the book and the Eddie Carr in the movie, nothing alike. This, the Sarah Harding in the book and movie are pretty different. And uh, the, on top of that, Kelly is not Malcolm's daughter in the book. We never got to see Dr. Levine. We never got to see Doc Thorne. The trailers going over the cliffer at the very end of the book, and even then, it's radically different because you don't get Dodson in the movie, you don't get the dinosaur egg snatching in the film. It was kind of adapted in Jurassic Park, but not not really at all. And uh, it's it's radically, radically different as far as the stories are concerned. There's no Roland Timbo in the book, no T-Rex in San Diego. No, there's not even an operation to take dinosaurs off the island and put them into a Jurassic Park in the mainland. The, the Lost World book and movie, they're completely different things. So what happened here? They took the books and they spread the material across all of the films. I have no idea why they didn't do a straight adaptation of The Lost World at all. In fact, I think that would have been perfect for Dominion. But in the end, that is the one that has had the most material just excised from it completely. There's barely anything that really translated to the movie counterpart. So I do think you're going to be getting a lot of new material and information, dinosaur attack scenes and all kinds of fun stuff in the books if you've never read them and just seen the movies. But one of the more important things that I think you're going to get out of them is the morals and warnings of Jurassic Park because while this is something that was prevalent in the first couple films they've really boiled everything down to just animal rights and corporate greed bad uh, humans saving dinosaurs good as far as the last three or four Jurassic Park films are concerned this was something that was in the lost world but the dinosaurs were still pretty vicious in that movie and would kill you no matter what they weren't kind of viewed as these immaculate creatures that you, you couldn't harm whereas some of the later films it seems a little ridiculous as far as grounded realism goes and the whole point of the warning of Jurassic Park is that we shouldn't play God it was that we should not clone these beasts for profit or ambition or anything like that because we know nothing about them and what is more important the people you love or your own ambitions and goals and unfortunately I, I think Colin Trevorrow kind of 
of approached the writing for the Jurassic World trilogy as like an anti-capitalist thing alone and a pro-animal rights angle. And I'm going to tell you guys straight up, that has never been a core foundational pillar of Jurassic Park's morals and warnings. And I don't want to hear about going back to the 1993 film either, because at, at the most you get like, oh, John Hammond and uh, Donald Gennaro, they want to have the dinosaur theme park. Oh, they're, they're greedy, evil people, but not really. I mean, Donald Gennaro is, uh, I think he's more of a slimy person because he abandons the children and runs to save himself when the T-Rex breaks out. And that's actually what his comeuppance is, and he deserved every bit of it for not protecting children. But John Hammond's not as greedy as he is, just he wants to create something that people can see and touch. This is his life's work and ambition. He wants to make something and make a stamp on the world. Creation. That's very different from just saying big conglomerate engine corporation bad. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I've always hated the idea that Jurassic Park should just be this big anti-capitalist uh, message and that message alone. Like, of course, we can critique corporate greed and stuff like that. However, the big thing that the novels go into so much detail with is the fact that Jurassic Park is a warning. It's a cautionary tale. It's saying, do not screw with nature just to get your own ambition, you know, going. Lost World did dive even more to the corporate greed stuff on the movie side, but the big character moment in that film was actually Roland Timbo. He wasn't a greedy corporate person trying to make money. He was a guy that had his ambitions go ahead of everything else, just like John. John Hammond. John Hammond wanted to build Jurassic Park and leave his name on the world, and Roland Timbo wanted to be the ultimate hunter and kill a T-Rex. And both of these men had to learn the hard way that what's more important than life is the people they love. I believe I've spent enough time in the company of death. And I think that that is actually more in line with any sort of greed sort of angle from the Jurassic Park novels. What you're going to learn pretty early on is that Jurassic Park is a big critique of modern science and modern scientific thinking as far as like the hubris of man. You know, we're superior in every way imaginable. Nothing can touch us. And we basically act like faux gods, like we can do everything and anything imaginable. That is an incredibly pride filled statement that will cause your downfall in an instant and Jurassic Park really makes a, a point of that in the novels. They are very, very aggressive at letting people know just because you can do something and think you're the king of the world doesn't mean you should. And I, I think that you're, you're going to get the actual cautionary warnings. And, and it goes much deeper than that, by the way, too. There's genetic experimentation warnings. There's also stuff about family being a big part of the Lost World novel. Once we see that the Velociraptor packs are not raised by actual prehistoric creatures and instead these genetic monsters they turn on each other. They're vicious. The children don't have any parents to give them an actual frame of how to behave. And they attack each other and kill each other. And that's very, very important. That's a very important theme of the book. And you can actually even relegate that to anything. If you don't have parents teaching you what's right and what's wrong and how to live your life, you're going to be a little monster. And it's the same thing with Extinction in the Lost World book, which was a massive point of interest and theme that did never, it never got adapted in the movies whatsoever. One other aspect, though, which you've, you've gotten a little bit of a taste from if you've watched the later movies is the origins of engine people like norman atherton who was john hammond's business partner they renamed him to benjamin lockwood and fallen kingdom there's also the investors in the book a lot of them from japan and uh, donald gennaro was actually carrying a around a miniature elephant that they uh cloned and you could carry it in like a little case this was another scene that kind of got cut from fallen kingdom they were going to allude to it also that they uh all the islands are extremely volcanic that stuff is in the books and they kind of seeded it little over I guess, you know what? They really only put that in Fallen Kingdom, didn't they? <laughs> Might be why I, I uh, don't hate that one in comparison to Dominion. But also, Isla Nublar is destroyed at the end of the Jurassic Park novel, which is why it got destroyed in Fallen Kingdom. Now, in the book, it gets airbombed by the Costa Rican Air Force, which doesn't exist, by the way. But uh, in the movie, they tried to adapt the volcanic eruption. So... 
they did it in their own way. The dinosaurs escape Isla Nublar, though, like I said, at the very beginning of the Jurassic Park book. These are vastly different stories, and there's a great scene in Michael Crichton's first novel where Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, and Donald Gennaro locate the Velociraptor nest, and they've been breeding rapidly. They all run out to the uh, beaches where they all look like a flock of birds uh, migrating. They're, they're watching this cargo ship pass by, and you can tell, like, immediately, oh my god, they've been doing this for some time. Like, they've been breeding and sneakily getting on ships and escaping to the mainland, even before the characters like Ian Malcolm got to the island to critique John Hammond. It is an eerie part of the book that I would love to see adapted in a film. We also see why that threat of dinosaurs in the mainland was so serious to begin with. I know a lot of people complain, like, oh, we would kill them immediately, they're no threat. And I understand why you say that, but the whole point of Jurassic Park is for people to think that they are on top of the world and then to get destroyed by mother nature who bites back even harder you know that's the whole point of this franchise and the books were more intelligent because it wasn't just the dinosaurs attacking and killing people that was the problem but there was a big deal with disease from the animals specifically something called dx which kills you you get bit you die or at least that's what happens to the animals. We later learn that it's not that deadly for humans, but it's a big scare. And, you know, you can tweak that if you ever want to do, like, a very serious uh, threat on the mainland. I'm shocked Dominion didn't adapt that, especially during COVID. You have the primary scary thing that would be people racing to get some sort of antidote to, and, and they abandoned it in favor of Locus. I am shocked. But Steven Spielberg changed a lot of these movies. He changed a lot of The Lost World. They had already had ideas going in place for Jurassic Park 2 before the book was even published, so you can see that these things were kind of working in tandem, and barely anything from the second book got adapted, much much less like a lot of the scientific stuff from the first novel. Which, you know, that's leaves a big question as to why The Lost World Jurassic Park was changed so much in the movie, and the simple answer is they just already had ideas in store and went with those instead of what was in the book itself. And the the actual reasons the Jurassic Park sequels, in my opinion, have had so many issues, and I don't hate them, you guys know that, but like, I think they really needed Michael Crichton. I've done a whole video on this before in the past, but Michael Crichton and the cautionary warnings that he brought to this series, that stuff should have been kept intact when they were making sequel films, and because they abandoned it in favor of, we gotta liberate the dinosaurs, we gotta save Littlefoot's mom, oh no. Fallen Kingdom did adapt a lot of stuff from the first novel, so I will give it credit for that, and Bayona directed an incredible looking movie. But the Jurassic World trilogy could only work that well up until Dominion because they just, they stopped really taking inspiration from these books and went off and did their own thing, kind of like what Spielberg did in Lost World. However, the books offer a lot of things that I think you guys will have a lot of fun exploring, and it interests me a lot. It's one of the reasons I wanted to create this channel in the first place was because I love Jurassic Park and the Lost World, both books and movies. Over the years, I've had some issues with Jurassic Park 3, but even that adapted the aviary sequence for Ceridactylus and the original Jurassic Park novel. And I don't mind Jurassic Park 3 that much these days. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I think Fallen Kingdom is pretty awesome. Like, as far as the attack scenes go, the darkness of it all, I love the gothic tone it it that movie kind of is in line in some spirit with Michael Crichton I think that the issues going for really all of these films if I'm going to be honest with you is that every time they go and drift away from Crichton they drift away from what made Jurassic Park Jurassic Park to begin with and I do understand that his point of view was to make a book that would actually be from the point of view of a child and they wouldn't let him do that so he had to make it a dark horror thing instead and Spielberg kind of made his wish come true in the first movie. But, you know, that publishing trivia aside, we've really pulled far from his material. And I think going forward, you should really read these books if you want some great stuff to look forward to and have fun with in the universe. All kinds of stuff, man. The tranquilizing of the Tyrannosaurus Rex on Isla Nublar. How about the scene where a man tries to stand still in front of a T-Rex nest because he thinks that they won't see him if he doesn't move, and then he gets ripped apart. That's 
fun. There's also stuff like a jeep chase. There's also stuff like the animals getting out on the mainland and everyone being freaked out. There's a great scene at the beginning of the Lost World novel where they get a carcass of a creature on top of the beach. And Martin Gutierrez, who's a great character in the books, never adapted, has to go over it and kind of use the government to co-sign its destruction so that it doesn't freak out the public, that dinosaurs on the, on the mainland, camouflaging Carnotauruses. Cool stuff, man. You should really read these books. I'm telling you, if you're a fan of the movies, you would be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't see where all this stuff came from. And there's only two books around 400 pages a piece, so it's not like I'm telling you to read all of the Lord of the Rings and expanded material. This is kind of an easy thing to breeze through. Anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. For Jurassic Park fans that have only seen the movies, definitely check these out. You're gonna have a good time, and if you've already read them before in the past, maybe you should read them again just because the film series has kind of closed with Dominion. I don't know what they're gonna do in the future, and I actually don't want them to do a 1-1 adaptation of the books because I, I don't want to see Lost World Jurassic Park retconned from the canon. I really like that movie, guys, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of want a straight adaptation of the second novel and some of the ideas from the first that got cut put into that movie. But those are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. Whatever yours happen to be guys i'd love to hear all about them in the comments down below now before i go i'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well you've all helped my channel immensely and i'm incredibly grateful for all of that support now i'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content if you feel like i deserve it i'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing i'll see you all in the next video guys and as always take it easy